Football is the most popular sport in America, and for high school athletes, it's also the most dangerous. The only thing protecting a player from a head injury is the helmet. Five on Your Side spent the past three months investigating the types of helmets being used at more than 140 area high schools, asking the question, do local schools have the safest helmets possible? Every high school football season, Friday night lights shine on fields all over the Bi-State area. A closer look reveals they also cast a dark shadow. <laughs> Studies show that athletes playing football are twice as likely to suffer a concussion than in any other sport. I didn't want him to play football. <laughs> How come? It's too rough. Janet Hill's son, Charlie, plays on the Fox High School freshman team. He got the ball on the first play of the first scrimmage of the year. The play kind of got messed up a little bit, and I wasn't really looking where I was going, and I got picked up by the linebacker. Another boy just slammed him, and I mean, he went up in the air and then down on his head. The season was still weeks away, and doctors told Charlie he had suffered a concussion. It got worse and worse for a few days. When school first started, I had bad headaches walking to my classes. I got dizzy. Though he didn't know it at the time, engineers at Virginia Tech University have spent the last 10 years doing research with players like Charlie in mind. Of all sports, your risk of head injury in football is the greatest. And what we try to do is how do we bring that risk down to where it's even with the other sports. Dr. Stefan Duma and his team of biomechanical engineers research everything from auto safety to protecting military troops. They've also spent a decade looking at football helmets. So we took 10 years, millions of data points, brought it in the lab, and recreated test energy levels to simulate what the players see on the field. The goal is to find out which football helmets offer better protection against concussion. First, they put sensors in the helmets to record how many times a player is hit, in what direction, and the magnitude. Then, using that information, they created a drop test to use on helmets most commonly used by high school football teams. Each model gets tested 120 times at different heights and different directions. The amount of impact absorbed by the helmet is then measured, and a star rating is assigned. One to five, with five being the best. And to, to put numbers on that, I can take for one drop test a one-star helmet and I'll get 150 Gs. Replace it with a five-star helmet, I can cut that in half to 75 Gs. And our, our fundamental point is there's a huge difference between 150 Gs and 75 Gs. Duma says based on what helmet you use, you can reduce your risk of concussion by more than 50%. After learning about the five-star system, News Channel 5 wanted to see how our high schools measure up. We sent public records requests to more than 140 schools in the bi-state area. We asked for records verifying which makes and models of helmets they're using. What we found is that many of the schools in our area have four- and five-star helmets. But we also found a significant number have one- and two-star helmets. Ready, hot! At St. Charles West, 106 of 122 helmets were four and five star, but 16 of them were just one star helmets. They were unaware of the Virginia Tech study and welcomed the information. My reaction was knowledge is power. If there's a study out there that can help us pick equipment that will keep our students safe, I want to know about it. Between practice and games, high school football players can get hit hundreds of times a year. And one thing is clear, no football helmet could prevent all concussions. As it turns out, Charlie Hill was wearing a four-star helmet when he suffered his concussion, and he's back on the field at Fox. As for his mom... Because I hadn't thought about it before he got a concussion, what kind of equipment they had issued to him, and I think I probably need to know that. Parents need to know. So how can parents find out what helmets their child's school is using? a one star or a five star. We have taken all the information and created a huge database along with a number of interactive tools to give everyone the opportunity to see the latest information. Here's Kay Quinn. Right now on KSDK's homepage, you'll see our five on your side investigation on football helmet safety. You'll be able to watch the story here and also check your school's database. You click on this line here and 
that will take you to another screen where you can enter your school name or use the drop down menu and that gives you your school's helmet star ratings you'll see the make and model of the helmet plus how many of the helmets your school has you'll also see the action taken that's your school's response to the virginia tech study so visit this story at ksdk.com where you'll find in-depth information about our helmet investigation Kay Quinn, News Channel 5. Only public schools had to respond to our requests, and every school we contacted uses certified helmets from the National Operating Committee on Standards for Athletic Equipment, better known as NOXI. The group conducts its own studies and tests on helmets. Now, tomorrow night, our investigation continues with the story of a local teen who nearly lost his life after suffering a head injury. People say there's no other experience like being on a high school football team. For Luke Yakel, football is about as good as it gets. The feeling of a games or making a good play is just an ultimate experience, really. So much so that when he tackled a player on the opposing team a couple of weeks ago, he didn't give much thought to the pain that followed. My one job was to block this kid, and I blocked him, but it was helmet to helmet contact. And as soon as the hit, I knew it hurt, but I just. You just got to tough it out. He finished the game, but five days later, the headaches got worse. Wednesday's practice was hard because my head hurt so bad, but I wouldn't, I still would not tell anybody about it. Luke's mom, Bonnie, knew her son was in pain. She called Luke's coach, who insisted the high school senior sit out the next game. There was some communication, and I think that that's, uh, that's key, and how much I appreciate that they listened to me and what I had to say, and... We kind of worked as a team. But the next morning. It was extreme, worse than anything I've felt before. A CT scan revealed not only a concussion, but bleeding on the brain. That hit had ruptured a cyst on Luke's brain that had been there since he was a child. An ambulance rushed him to Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center. The brain is looking gray here, and this clot looks uh, kind of whitish. Dr. Samer El Baba is an associate professor of neurosurgery at St. Louis University School of Medicine. Now, when he arrived to us, he was very ill and he was declining very rapidly. When he described that he was hours away from significant decline and he was talking about loss of function and seizures and co coma, um, you know, real, really emotional. Luke underwent two hours of emergency brain surgery with no complications. We're very fortunate he had an excellent outcome. He was released from the hospital four days later. A big reminder on the left side of his head about how serious a concussion can be when you keep quiet. Obviously, being on the team is amazing, but the brain surgery was not like worth trying to practice that week. You can't always toughen things out. You know, you need to be honest, think about the big picture. For Luke, that picture still includes football. He's hoping to watch his teammates play in this Saturday's big playoff game. Even if I have to sit on the road in my dad's truck and watch it, but I want to be there for him and support him as much as I can. For Five on Your Side, Mike Bush, News Channel 5. High schools are already taking action after a Five on Your Side investigation into the safety of football helmets. We've spent the past three months investigating what types of helmets schools in our area have. A 10-year study shows that some football helmets protect players better than others. It's a game that stays with you long after graduation. And for some, so can the ramifications. Studies show that high school football players are nearly twice as likely to sustain a head injury than a college player. And when they're hit in the head, their only defense is the helmet they wear. That's why researchers at Virginia Tech University have been studying football helmets for more than a decade. The number of head impacts in football uh, dwarfs any other sport, and that's where we really have to look at the equipment and the rules. So you have a lot more head impacts. After extensive tests, Dr. Duma says depending on what helmet you use, you may be able to reduce your concussion risk by as much as 50%. That's how Virginia Tech has compiled their five-star rating of the most commonly used football helmets. They advise that schools should have a three rating or higher. Basically, how much is that helmet going to cushion the impact? The Virginia Tech study has its critics, like Noxie, 
the National Operating Committee for Standards and Athletic Equipment. Schools in Missouri and Illinois use Noxie certified helmets. Dave Halstead advises Noxie. The merits of the science are actually reasonable. The merits of the conclusion are, in my opinion, unreasonable. Noxie believes the Virginia Tech data has flaws. Among them, it doesn't consider things like helmet weight and how each helmet fits each player differently. What we do know is that helmets that meet the Noxie standard, which is a pass-fail, we don't rate them um, because we can't find a difference between them. But Virginia Tech says their research proves otherwise. You can pass the Noxie standard by a little bit or a lot. And what we're saying is the helmets that pass it by a lot are much better and they're dramatically different in acceleration levels. Knowledge is power. If there's a study out there that can help us pick equipment that will keep our students safe, I want to know about it. Dr. Jeff Marion, the superintendent of the St. Charles School District, first heard about the Virginia Tech study from our investigation. Of 122 helmets available to players at St. Charles West, 106 were four and five star rated. The 16 that were rated one star, he had them pulled immediately. Well, it was real easy for us to take those out of circulation. We've already replaced those or have on order 16 new helmets that are rated at the five star level. Among other schools taking action in the wake of our investigation, Alton High School, they wrote to us, we received your letter regarding the study of football helmets. The seven helmets that KSDK identified as two-star were backup helmets that were only being kept in inventory for an emergency. The district has determined they are no longer needed and had them destroyed. Thank you for the information you provided. At McClure and McClure South Berkeley, we received this about their 17 one-star rated helmets. As educators and coaches, the safety and well-being of our students is our primary concern. Upon review of the data presented in the Virginia Tech helmet ratings, we acted immediately to replace all our helmets in our inventory carrying less than a four-star rating. At St. Genevieve, where they have 74 helmets with a two-star rating, we are reviewing all the available information and will take it into consideration in the future when decisions are made regarding football equipment. For most schools, budgets are tight and replacing an entire inventory of football helmets, expensive. Well, I think the excuse you're going to get is cost. And I get that question a lot, but we can't afford to do this. And my simple answer is if you can't afford to have better equipment, you probably can't afford to be playing that sport. No helmet can guarantee a concussion-free season. And there are new studies and new equipment every year. The goal of all the research and this investigation is to keep schools and parents aware and kids safe. So how can parents find out what helmets their child's school is using? Well, we've taken all the information and created a huge database, along with a number of interactive tools to give everyone the opportunity to see the latest information. Here's Kay Quinn. Right now on KSDK's homepage, you'll see our Five on Your Side investigation on football helmet safety. You'll be able to watch the story here and also check your school's database. You click on this line here and that will take you to another screen where you can enter your school name or use the drop down menu. And that gives you your school's helmet star ratings. You'll see the make and model of the helmet, plus how many of the helmets your school has. You'll also see the action taken. That's your school's response to the Virginia Tech study. So visit this story at ksdk.com where you'll find in-depth information about our helmet investigation. Kay Quinn, News Channel 5. Now, it's important to note that there are other studies that disagree with the Virginia Tech study and have different findings. We will stay on top of all the new data that comes in.